Right, in a previous video we saw that we basically can group our costs for a manufacturing entity into these three broad categories, manufacturing cost, admin and selling and distribution costs. And what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom in a little bit on this factory and we're going to see what are the costs that we can find in the factory and how do we actually group or classify those costs. So uh, if we zoom into our factory, we are going to assume that we are still making clay bowls. So here we go. Here we can see the process. We can see our wood coming in the receiving division. Then we are going to cut up our wood. We're going to put it all together. We're going to add some varnish. And then finally, we're going to package our uh, semi three dimensional tables into some nice polystyrene and boxes, etc. Right, so the question we're trying to answer for a manufacturing entity is what is the cost that goes into making one of these finished clay balls? What is the cost of a finished product? And there's three um, headings that we're going to look at, uh, direct material, direct labor, and overheads. They make up the cost of manufacturing of a finished product. And we can see that our overheads also includes three categories, indirect labor, indirect material, and then other overheads. So you'll see that it's important that we can distinguish between direct material and indirect material, direct labor and indirect labor. Because the indirect labor and material forms part of my overheads. So let's just uh, go through the uh, cost items one by one and let's go across the assembly line in and see what costs we find and where they fit in. So if we start with our direct material, um, the first direct material that we find in this process, and it should be quite obvious, is wood. We're going to need wood in order to make these tables, but also uh, in order to get the wood into the receiving division, we may have to pay some costs for delivering that wood. And that we call, if you remember correctly, freight on purchases or carriage on purchases depending on where you are from in the world um, but that is to get the wood into uh, or to our premises from the supplier and that's all going to form part of my direct material costs which will eventually be included in the cost of a finished product and let's think is there any other direct materials that gets added along the process and so the question we're asking is remember a direct material is a material that is actually found in the finished product so if we look at our finished product here we will definitely have wood uh, and that's kind of about it so we'll have wood and we may have some in the assembly stage we may have to add some screws and glue just to get this thing all together and in the finishing stage, well, to just to get the color right, we may have to add some varnish. Okay, so I don't know much about making tables, but I do know that we're going to need some wood and some screws. Or some glue and screws, and then some varnish here to get our finishing touches. All right, so that's my direct material. And you can see that all of these materials actually end up in my finished product. They actually form part of the finished product. Right, if we then look at, um, just as a, uh, in conjunction with that, if we look at indirect materials, now these are materials that, uh, they're part of the factory process, all right? So um, we're gonna use them in the factory, we're gonna use them in the manufacturing process, but they actually not, they actually don't end up in the finished product. Okay, so, uh, can you think of some materials that would fit that category? Well, that the packaging material is actually not in the finish, finished product, so we can definitely say uh, packaging materials, um, that would be one. And there might also be some consumables, uh, like for example, in our finishing department, we may have definitely some sandpaper in order to get this thing nice and smooth. All right, in our, um, Cutting and assembly departments, we may have some uh, machinery that actually cuts these wood into nice uh, uh, equal lengths, and we may need to maintain that machinery. So we may have to incur 
cost for uh, lubricating oil. Uh, we may need to clean up uh, the factory. Uh, we need, may need some cleaning materials, etc. So we're going to put down here just some lubricating oil, some cleaning materials, and who knows, maybe even some of the machines, or if we have generators, we may need some fuel to keep them running. Okay, so these are indirect costs. The reason they're indirect is because we don't see any uh, consumables, we don't see any oil, we don't see any cleaning materials, we don't see any fuel, we don't see any sandpaper in the finished table, but we did need these materials in order to actually make a finished table, and that's why they form part of manufacturing costs, but they're not direct manufacturing costs as such, they are indirect manufacturing costs, and thus they form part of my overheads category. All right, so that's labor. Let's quickly turn our attention to the direct labor. Well, that was material, sorry. Let's now go for labor. And our receiving division, uh, let's just think of who might be working in this factory. Well, we may have a number of guys. The guy actually receiving the wood uh, it might be a security guard just to check that everything happens um, uh, under supervision and that nothing gets stolen. Um, and we may have a guy actually operating these cutting machines and um, we may have a guy putting the table together, a guy finishing the table we may have a factory supervising si supervisor sorry, um, just overseeing this whole process and uh, who else might there be? we may have some cleaning staff that is just going uh, uh, and, and cleaning up etc so where do they all fit in? Let's start with our security guard. Um, well, is when we look at uh, uh, direct labor, we're looking at those labor costs that for people that are actually working directly on the finished product. So because our security guard is not working directly on the finished table, he will actually, the cost that we pay to him will actually not be part of direct labor. It will form part of my indirect labor. So there we go, my security guard. And um, all right, so whatever we pay to our security guard, the wages, the UIF contribution, pension fund contribution, etc., that will not be part of direct labor because he didn't actually work on the table, he's just facilitating the, the process. The same with my factory foreman because he's not actually doing any specific work on any of uh, uh, or at any of these stages, he's rather overseeing all the other workers. And again, he is going to be considered to be uh, all the costs we all the costs we pay to him is going to be considered to be indirect labor. All right, so our factory foreman, also sometimes known as factory supervisor, all throughout the process, this guy, whatever we pay to him, um, he's going to be be present throughout the play. Sorry, he's going to be present throughout the process but whatever we pay to him is going to constitute indirect labor again right at the end in the storeroom we probably have a security guard again but we'll only pay him once i'm just putting it here so that you can actually see where the different people fit in in the factory all right uh, and then lastly uh, one more person that will be considered indirect labor is our person if you look at our indirect materials the person actually maintaining and cleaning our machines that will be our cleaner or our cleaning staff and um, they or our maintenance staff even we could even include your maintenance staff all right all right and they will all be considered indirect labor so they're not working directly on the product so who will then be direct labor well, the guy actually operating the cutting machines to cut these boards, he will be considered to be a, a, a all the costs we pay to him will be considered direct labor costs. The guy assembling, let's just call him the assembler. And then finally, we can uh, consider the guy finishing the tables as the finisher. So it sounds like a, a movie title, uh, the finisher. And he finishes the tables, and because he is working again directly on the table, it's considered direct labor. So I hope you're getting the difference between direct and indirect costs, um, just with some of these examples. All right, then lastly, we've got one category of expenses that we haven't really looked at, 
and uh, that is our other overheads and that is all the other costs all the extra costs that didn't fall within material or labor and didn't fall with indirect material and labor either and can you think of the cost necessary to run this factory all right so this factory definitely will not just operate if we just have the wood and we just have the people um, uh, working in the factory and we, we pay them that that's not all it takes to make these tables we also have to actually um, get the facility and pay for the facility and that's that's going to be my my rental costs as part of maintaining the facility we're going to have to pay for water and electricity all right so we've got our electricity we've got our um, maintenance of the facility that we have to pay uh, anything for that we've got our rent and um, that we have to pay then in terms of the machinery inside the factory now these machines are being used every year so every year we use a portion of those machines so the cost of those machines somehow need to find their way in the finished product however we need to be careful here because let's say we've got this massive big cutting machine and uh, it's maybe going to last us uh, 10 years or 6 to 10 years and it cost us let's let's just take a guess 50,000 rand for that machine um, if we're going to include 50,000 rand in the cost of my finished table well I'm really going to struggle to to sell those tables because that's just going to be way too much so rather than including the full costs we're going to include the portion of the cost that was actually used in making the finished table and that portion of the fixed asset that is used we call depreciation so we are specifically going to include the depreciation of the factory machinery my cutting machines if there's any assembly machines etc again we'll probably also have a lot of tools a lot of um, um, saws and uh, all sorts of other uh, machinery that we will use and again the depreciation of those machines will include in our um, finished product okay so these are just some examples of costs that we may find in our other overheads category all right so i hope you get an idea and um, this was just to give you an idea of the different type of costs and if we quickly summarize the three different product costs here we will see that my direct material and my direct labor is known as my primary production costs or my primary manufacturing costs and they are the costs directly related to making the finished product and then we've got our kind of our secondary our other cost which is my factory overhead overheads which are all the extra costs necessary to make the table now these three together is known as the total manufacturing or production cost of the finished product sometimes just for interest sake the direct labor and the overheads is known as conversion costs because it is actually converting this raw material into a finished good